good morning i am dr sabita gokul raj associate professor from the department of oral medicine and radiology from vinayaka mission sankracharya dental college my topic for presentation will be on radiation biology on the following contents i'll be dealing with the introduction radiation chemistry effects of radiation difference between deterministic and stochastic effects and deterministic effects on cells tissues and body with understanding of radio sensitivity and radio resistance and stochastic effects by the end of the lecture the student should be able to define radiation biology understand what radiation chemistry is know the effects of radiation differentiate between the deterministic and stochastic effect understand the meaning of radio sensitivity and radio resistance and acute radiation syndrome so what is radiation biology radiation biology is the study of the effects of ionizing radiation on the living system radiation produces some changes in the cellular level which could be analyzed within 10 to the power of minus 13 seconds and these x-ray photons when they interact with the tissues can either cause an ionization excitation or breakage of bonds which could lead to chemical changes and finally the biological change. Radiation chemistry can be described in terms of direct and indirect effect. So what is direct effect and what is indirect effect? When there is a direct alteration of the biological molecules by ionizing radiation, which begins by the absorption of energy by the biological molecule and formation of a free radical. These free radicals are unstable. When the radiation acts on the cellular level, it brings about changes directly affecting the cells. This is what is called as direct effect. But most of the cells are consisting of water molecules. About 70% of the cells have water molecules. When these water molecules are irradiated or the cells containing water molecules are irradiated, it produces what is called as indirect effect. So indirect effect are those in which hydrogen and hydroxyl free radicals are produced by the action of radiation on water which interacts with the organic molecule. And the damage of the system depends upon the concentration of these free radicals. To understand this, let us try to understand what radiolysis of water is. It is the production of free radicals in water. When we are exposed to radiation, it produces radiolysis. When water is exposed to an electron or a photon, it produces hydrogen ions as well as hydroxyl ions. These free radicals are unstable and these are the ones which produce some changes in the system. Going on to the effects of radiation. The effects of radiation are broadly classified into two, the deterministic effect and stochastic effect. So what is deterministic effect? It can produce an acute or a chronic change whereas stochastic effect can produce a somatic or a genetic effect depending upon the cell in which it is affecting. So what is deterministic effect? It is the damaging effect of a body of a person who is irradiated which occurs definitely due to a specific high dose of radiation. So here it leads to killing of large number of cells. So it is determined to cause death of the cells. When a person is irradiated or when a cell is irradiated, it causes death of the cells. This is what is called as deterministic effect. Whereas in stochastic effect, there is no death of the cells, whereas it brings about some changes within the cells, which will be observed as a sublethal damage to the DNA, which can produce a change later sometime in their life, or it would be her inherited to the offsprings. So at present or when the person is being irradiated, there may not be any changes, but later sometime in their life, it can produce a change. And now at present, it will give what is called as a sublethal damage to the DNA. And this sublethal damage can result in cancer formation or heritable mutations. So let's try to understand what is the difference between the deterministic and stochastic effect. Examples for deterministic effect is mucositis, where the cells of the mucosa are dead and it produces an immediate reaction and this is what is called as deterministic effect. Whereas in stochastic effect, any cancer which is being formed or any heritable disease which is being formed by the offsprings is what is called as stochastic effect. 
And then deterministic effect is caused by killing of many cells, whereas in stochastic it is not killing that occurs, it is only the sublethal damage which occurs to the DNA. The threshold dose for deterministic effect, yes it is specific and sufficient cell killing is required to cause a clinical response, whereas in stochastic there is no threshold level and even a photon can cause a change in the DNA that can lead to cancer or a heritable effect. Severity of the clinical effects in dose. It is proportional to the dose and greater the dose, greater is the effect. Whereas in stochastic, all or non response where an individual has either an effect or it will not produce an effect. So let's try to understand what are the deterministic effect and how deterministic effect affects from the cellular to the molecular to the organs to the entire body as such. So effects of deterministic effect on the cells from the intercellular structure. When the intercellular structures are affected, it affects the macromolecules which can either cause the structural or the functional change in the cellular organisms. It can even lead to the cell death. When we try to understand what is affected, it is the, in the cells, it is the nucleus which is affected because the nucleus is more radiosensitive in terms of lethality than the cytoplasm, especially in the dividing cells. And inside the nucleus, it is the DNA within the chromosome which is more radiosensitive and that is the one which is more, being more affected. Let's discuss about the chromosomal aberrations. Chromosomes serve as very useful marker in identifying the radiation injury. So chromosomal aberrations are observed in the irradiated cells at the time of mitosis when the DNA condenses to form chromosomes. When a person is being exposed to radiation, before the DNA synthesis takes place, only one arm of the chromosome is affected. Whereas, if a person has been irradiated before DNA synthesis takes place, both the arms of the chromosomes will be irradiated. So, what happens to the DNA in the deterministic effect? It can cause any kind of alteration in the DNA by causing a breakage of one or both the strands. It can either break the cross-linking of the DNA strands it can also cause change of or loss of the base. It can also cause disruption of hydrogen bonds between the DNA strands. So let's try to understand how it affects the tissues in organs. It depends upon the radio sensitivity of the tissues in organs. These organs absorb the amount of radiation and sometimes it produces some changes. Sometimes more amount of radiation is required to produce this killing of cells. So it depends upon or measured by the response of which it has been irradiated. Loss of moderate number of cells does not affect the function of most of the organs. So it requires a quite a number of amount of radiation to cause a change or produce death of these cells. And the severity of this change depends on the dose of this and thus the amount of cell loss. So let's try to understand what radiosensitivity is. So we have to understand what radio sensitivity is. Again, we'll have to understand what radio resistant is. Different cells from various organs of the same individual may respond to a radiation quite differently. The amount of absorptive capacity of a cell to absorb the radiation is what is called as radio sensitivity. And some cells are having more amount of radio sensitivity and some will not have that much of radio sensitivity. And the radio sensitivity depends on the rate of cell division, the cellular metabolic rate, developmental stage in which the cell is, the blood and the nutrition that has been supplied to the cell. Rapidly dividing cells are more radio sensitive. For example, uh, the basal cells which are usually rapidly dividing are more radio sensitive. And the cells which have high metabolic rate are more radio sensitive and cells during the developmental stage or the primordial stages are more susceptible to radiation damage. And cells which are normally undernourished will produce or reproduce less and faster reproduction occurs which will lead to more mutation if it is more radio sensitive. Based on which we have cells which are categorized as high radio sensitivity, cells which have low radio sensitivity and cells with intermediate radio sensitivity. Examples being lymphoid organs, bone marrow, testis and mucous membrane have high radio sensitivity. Whereas fine vasculature, salivary glands, growing bone and cartilage, lung, kidney and liver have intermediate radio sensitivity. Muscles and optic lens have got low radio sensitivity. So these cells which have high radio sensitivity are more prone to be or affected with deterministic effect. 
So let's try to understand what acute radiation syndrome is. When a person is going to be irradiated, the person experiences so much changes from the cellular level to the tissue level. Now let's find out what happens when the person is irradiated to the entire body. So person is irradiated during uh, treatment procedures for cancer. It could be oral cancer or any other cancer when the patient has been exposed to radiation as in the protocol of radiotherapy, like patient will come across or will be experiencing what was called as acute radiation syndrome. Because the person is exposed to the amount of radiation that is much more than what is to be accepted by the individual. So acute radiation syndrome is a collection of signs and symptoms which is experienced by a person after acute whole body exposure to radiation. So these changes sometimes takes place within few minutes to hours or sometimes it takes even months to years to have these changes taking place. So how does it happen? When a person has been irradiated, so usually about one to two grays of radiation has been given in the beginning. When a person is exposed to one to two grays, they start off with something called as the prodromal symptoms where the person will have malaise, fatigue, fever, tiredness and all that will be represented when the patient is exposed to one to two grays of radiation. But this is not enough to cure or as a treatment protocol during radiotherapy. So we try to increase the amount of radiation and when the radiation is increased to two to four grays of radiation, we, it leads to what is called as mild hematopoietic syndrome. Hematopoietic symptoms, there is decrease in the amount of red blood cells, the white blood cells and the platelets. And because of that, the patient, when the amount of the radiation which is going to be increased to about four to seven grays of radiation can lead to what is called as severe hematopoietic symptoms where the patient will experience anemia. There'll be increase in the amount of hemorrhage that is going to be seen and the patient may be more prone to infections. We don't stop with that. We try to increase the amount of radiation to seven to 15 grays of radiation. So grays of radiation is given and when it, so much of radiation has been given, it leads to what is called as gastrointestinal symptoms. Along with the hematopoietic symptoms, the patient do come across the gastrointestinal symptoms. Here, it leads to diarrhea and hemorrhage of the intestine. The intestine, the basal cells of the intestine is made up of rapidly dividing cells and these try to absorb more amount of radiation. So when it does that, these rapidly proliferating cells split from the connective tissue which can lead to what is called as the intestinal ulcers and cause bleeding of that intestine. So again, when the patient is exposed to more amount of radiation, to up to 50 grays of radiation, along with the other prodromal symptoms and hematopoietic and gastrointestinal symptom, it does lead to the CVS and the CNS symptoms where the patient could even be fatal or the patient can sometimes have fibroatrophy of the cardiac muscles also. So to avoid this, once we know that the patient has got decrease in the amount of blood cells, we have to start treating the patient with antibiotics. And if we know that the patient is anemic and decrease in the amount of the platelets, we can even go in for blood transfusion to avoid such conditions. So acute radiation syndrome is something which we have to really consider and think of. So all this while we were talking about deterministic effect. Now let's try to understand what stochastic effect is. Stochastic effect results from the sublethal damage to the DNA of the individual cells. As said before, it does not produce immediate changes, but it brings about some changes in the DNA, which will be reflected later sometime in the individual's life, or sometimes it will be inherited to the offsprings. So it can either cause carcinomas or malignancies, or it can cause some heritable effect to the offsprings. So how does it cause cancer? So radiation can cause cancer by either modifying the DNA. So it will be sublethal later when there is any sort of trigger, it can cause to a cancer. Where radiation can also induce the gene mutation. Radiation can also stimulate or act as an initiator to start the process of carcinogenesis. Once the process is started, it can also act as an initiator. It can also act as a promoter stimulating the cells to multiply. It can also act as a converting the pre-malignant cells into malignant ones for the conversion of the proto-oncogenes into oncogenes. It can also lead to involve the loss of function in the case of tumor suppressor genes. So how does it cause heritable effects? 
are changes which are seen in the offsprings of the irradiated individual. So it is not affecting at present when the person has been affected or irradiated. Later sometime it has been carried by that individual and it has been transmitted to the offsprings. This is a consequence of the damage of the genetic material of the reproductive cells. And when it is at low level of exposure, such as encountered in dentistry, that are far less important than carcinogenesis. Thank you for your hearing.